Hey guys, gals. What we've got here is some saddle soap. They make brown and black. I get this from Bicards, or you can get it from Feebrings Direct. This Feebrings saddle soap. It's F I E B I N G S. Feebrings, however you want to pronounce it, I don't know. So, when something is really dirty, like this, you gotta wash it. You gotta wash it. So what you want to do is you want warm water, not hot, hot, hot. This is a grooming brush for horses. You can get them at Chewy.com, pretty reasonable. And they bend if you need it. Get you some saddle soap on your brush. Get your part wet and you scrub it. Get all that nasty dirt off. Come on over here and watch. You want to get all the real heavy grime off. It has to be done before you can discard it. It doesn't have to be spick and span clean, but you got all the heavy stuff's got to go. Got to go. Now I'm using brown because this is probably a brown leather originally. Even though it's real dirty and nasty, it's not black. If you use black on a brown, it'll change the tanning of it to a degree. But you can certainly use black if you want. Make it a darker color. If you need to, you can stick it in a vat of warm water and soak it for a little bit. So this stuff is really crustified. It's starting to tear just because nobody's ever soaked this thing in the whole life. Do some kind of moisturizing treatment. That's all grime on my fingers. If it's really bad, you can break out the heavy soap and then settle soap it. Not the best procedure, but if it's full of mud and crap from 50 years ago, then that's what you gotta do, man. Yeah, this, this has some really heavy grime on it. So we're gonna break out the heavy soap. And what this green stuff is, is uh, Vanilla Noel. Get on Amazon. You just change the bottle. And that really cuts the grease. And next to that hand soap. Now this mud flat came off the 42F, our red one, and the mud flat that is on the police bike. Mud flat off. Hmm. Okay. Fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mud flat that came on the police bike is broken on two of the mounts. Still got some. We gotta do it again. This takes a little bit of elbow grease. It takes time. Nothing for it. So I'm going to take this mud flat here because it's correct. 
and not broken and put it on the flea flap. Covered a washer buried in the grind, which you, you can use. Doesn't have washers. Right, nuts and bolts and washers, very important. I'm still digging the grain out of it. really nasty like this one. You gotta get it all out before you can put your card on. I'm still getting grime out, out of this, that's why it's splashed like that. It's all dirt. It's all embedded dirt. Now if it's fairly clean, it doesn't have to be spotless, if it's fairly clean, you don't have to do this. But anything embedded with gears and age and grease, you've got to clean it. You've got to clean it. It's almost there. Not yet, but almost. You want to do this on a fairly warm day. At minimum, you need 80 degrees if you really want to have it work right. I wouldn't do it in the hundreds plus, but between 80 and 90, it works really good. That's about good. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to keep continue this process without not getting any more dirt out of it. And since I'm making a video and I have no way to uh, edit my videos, I'm not about to start doing that. I don't want to take the time. And I think it's important to show everybody that I'm not editing videos so I can show the real what really happens. Like today is a difficult day to start a bike. I'm going to get back to this in a couple minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to soak it in warm water right now as I go and do the rest of what I intended. So. Dry my hands off, obviously, because I can't be doing the rest with wet hands. And since I'm going to have to wash my hands a little bit, I'm just going to move this out of the way up here and let it soak. And I'll get back to it after the video is done. So, a little soaking is not going to hurt it. What you want to do. And you, you have to time this and know you're going to be able to do it. You want it to get it dry. There's no stitching. You, you can let it dry all night and put a fan on it. If there's stitching, don't let it dry out all the way. That's why you got to time it. So, over here, we've got two seats. And I picarded these for what I'm going to call a picard bath. That's my term. Two days ago, and after I got them out in the sun, which you're not going to see, is if you time it right, you still have a little juice around the edges, but the top of the leather looks like it's dry, but it's not, and it's real hot. So you take your Picard at that time with it nice and hot. You don't want it so hot you can't touch it. That's too much heat. It's too hot that day. You want it so hot that you can barely touch it and just put a little more on. Scoop some on, put it on until it stops absorbing into the leather. Because there, there's no such thing as it's perfect and this is the time and it's 20 minutes and it's done. Because you can't quite control the sun's heat. But it has to be natural heat. You can't put this stuff in the oven and make it work. It, it's just not going to happen right. It doesn't heat up right. So what you do is you come back with one of these little fiber cloths. It's not really hot enough today to make this happen just right, but that's the temperature we got. So, as like I said, you can't control the sun's heat. And if I had a heat and air conditioning unit in here, I'd actually have it a little warmer in here because this would be a little more liquidy, even though it's a hot day. But I'd, I'd heat, actually heat it up in this whole shop about five degrees warmer than where, what it is right now. So, I could be here with shorts, dripping sweat, and this would be real liquidy. And this would make it perfect. But it is what it is, and so we're adjusting accordingly. So you come back here, and you, with these, one of these fiber towels, is you wipe off as much excess as you can. As you notice, I've got it all underneath. Okay? And you're going to wipe it off. Now, I'm going to have to come back to this on a hotter day because I'm still leaving too much goo because it's not really warm enough. But I'm leaving for Wasi on here shortly, as a lot of you know. And I wanted to make this video now while I have a few minutes to give you an idea. So when, when it's hot enough, this sticky residue will actually absorb and I can wipe it off. It'll actually be like a semi-liquid, liquid, um, about five degrees too cool. So I guess I'm sweating now with jeans and a t-shirt. I should be sweating like this in shorts. And when you wipe off as much as you can, you come back with one of these here and you buff it. Okay, see, see how it's not running? See how I'm getting this white? That's because it's not hot enough. If it was hot enough, I wouldn't be getting that. But after you buff your whole seat, you take a clean one of these, so I'm just going to use a clean area here, and you come back and go over it again, and 
right? Let's do the whole seat again. And then you take, I've got a few of these that I bought here from Chewy.com, they're about seven bucks a piece. You take a clean one and you go back over it. You follow? When it's all done, it won't be sticky or tacky, it'll just be a, a nice, beautiful piece of leather. It'll be all nice and soft and beautiful. Right? Now, sometimes you have to treat, do what I'm doing a, two or three times to get everything just the way you want it. So don't be surprised if you have to repeat the process. So here is the process here. This is what we do. This seat was becarded about five years ago, and I made some videos. I don't know if this seat was on them. But this here is the real magic. The right temperature, when you finish it with these finishing tools, I want it right here. What? Oh, Picard, speak up. This is Picard. So you gotta come back. Look it up, that's P-E-C-A-R-D, leather dressing. You can Google it. Okay. Now you want to leave a nice white coating everywhere. Now these fringy seats are also why I bought several of these because when you clean the fringes off, you gotta scoop them like this. To clean it off after you're done with your, your, your final one. In this phase here, I'm scooping it off two at a time. You can't just do one. But you want a thick enough coating where you can see it. Like I said, you might have to do it two or three times to get the right absorption because it has to go all the way through the leather, not just the surface. It has to go entirely through the leather. Now, all my seats, the vast majority of them, got exposed to really hot temperatures at Dixon, it's about 100 degrees. We had everything in the shade pretty much but it's still massively hot for several days. So I, I gotta go through everything and re -picard it. So I was pulling everything, all the seats and the bags and everything off, every bike I had up there. What a pain in the ass. What an absolute pain in the ass. So, that's all right. Now the real magic comes, the one I'm about to show you after this. I was in the building next door, I was mounting them upstairs, and it was a tin building. It was about an ambient 90, 95 degrees on a warm day like this, it always be hotter. And I had pretty good absorption, but it was never quite right. I wasn't really happy with the way it came out. Because what I wasn't doing is what I'm going to show you after I get done prepping this seat. fringe stuff you got to get it everywhere you got to get it through the fringes both sides it's, it, it's got to be this light coating but it's got to be coated and the old fringes sometimes they come back perfectly supple and sometimes they don't it's just a matter of what kind of treatment it's had over its life did anybody care for it or has it never been cared for This seat I've mounted, other people have mounted it, whether it was actually been used and on the road, who knows. But stuff from this vintage, just because you mounted it on a bike, if it's never actually been ridden, like somebody sitting on it, and going down the road, in my opinion, it's still brand new. Now if it was a 2010 part, it's different. This is a part from prior to World War II, the thing's 70 some years old. Changes the definition to a degree. Again, that is my opinion. And since it's my channel, I am free to state my opinion. Okay, now you get to do the rest of it. Always leave a little bit extra in the creases because you have the double fold leather 
and you have to make sure it has enough to go through everything. So the same thing on the back. Where it double folds over, put a little extra. Put a little extra on your jewels. It has to be able to seep and go under all of that. That is what's so important about the next phase I'm gonna show you because if it doesn't have the right temperature, it can't seep and go where it needs to go. It just goes on the outside and you're gonna be repeating this process and never getting it quite right several times. It has to have the right temperature. If it's a cool day, like 70 degrees, give it up, it ain't gonna happen. It has to be 80 plus. Absolutely must. And if it's 100 plus, I wouldn't do it at all. It's too hot. Such a thing is too hot. Okay. And we'll flip this around carefully. Now, if you notice, I have all the studs and everything, all the mounts in the bottom. That's because I can have it on something, like what I do, a table, and not have my fringe impacted by pressure. Don't let your fringe get impacted by pressure. So put it on something, put your mounts on, whatever, but get it off the table. Okay. You want it nice and gooey and ju juicy all over. Fairly even spread. Make sure you get it in all little creases, little extras. Stupid ass important. So, now, what we do, Oh, she's so tired from all the action. All the action. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's from chewing on that leash. <laughs> yep. so here, here's a mud flap here prior, prior to the final wipe. This came off the 42F. And here is a leather, some kind of weird leather mud flap. I have to be hard still. So what you do is you put it in your little trash bag. Here. Be careful of your fringe, so fringe goes in last. Now here's the real ace of how this works. Dark trash bag, 80 plus day. Okay, you got to watch it. If it's 88 plus, boy, it's going to really heat up fast. You can't overcook it. You can overcook this real fast. Yeah, put it on the windshield, make sure it's on your mounts, not on the fringe. And either in a vehicle that you don't care about, that'll never run again, or on some kind of pan. Preferably white, not metal, plastic pan, because it's gonna drip out of the bag and it's gonna go everywhere. That's all over your wiring. But this here heats up and creates a properly temperatured swimming bath, if you will, of Picard to soak in. It has to be in an almost liquid state with natural heat. And that's the final trick. So you gotta time it. Right about two hours seems to be right. It depends on how hot the day is. So pay attention to the temperatures. Come out and check it in two hours. If it's not real hot to the touch, if it's not 
perfectly like you didn't have any Picard on the top of the seat. It's not done yet. Give it a few more minutes, come back and check every 15 minutes or so. So you want to put it out right about noon. So you've got the afternoon to let everything percolate right. But when you're done, then you come back in in any dry areas of the seat, you put a little extra Picard, let it soak in, it'll melt right in your hand on that hot seat. So it doesn't melt anymore and then you're done. Leave it till the next day or the day after when the temperatures are right and go through the process like I was showing you. So that's that. We'll see you guys in the next video.